As of today, betting odds shows Republicans winning the Senate with a 73% chance. This is important because in order for either candidate, Trump or Harris, to get anything important done in their term, they need the support of this crucial branch of power. Looking at the states up for grabs, this 73% makes sense since Republicans have a clear fundamental advantage. Out of the 34 seats, only 11 are Republican, compared to 23 being Democrat and 8 of those current blue seats also being a part of some of the most competitive states in the country politically. With the Democrats' slim majority at risk, today we're going to look at the 2024 Senate elections map, filling it in based on the most recent polls for every race. There's a lot of new data to cover, so let's get right into it. On the West Coast, the first state we can give to the Democrats is the Aloha State of Hawaii, where Maisie Hirono is seeking her third term. Not many expect Hawaii to change given its historical solid blue stance, so there aren't any polls available as of right now. Because of this, we can make Hawaii our first safe Democrat state. Moving on to the mainland is Maria Cantwell, where she expected to win her fifth term in office for the state of Washington. The most recent poll from public policy polling shows her winning by a huge margin of plus 23 over her Republican counterpart, Dr. Raul Garcia. A margin of plus 23 makes Washington another safe Democrat state. Next up is California, one of the biggest and most politically important states in the nation, which fun fact, hasn't put a Republican in the Senate since the 80s. California's most recent poll from the Public Policy Institute of California, which polled 1,261 likely voters, shall shift winning by a margin of plus 31. Polls in California have been pretty consistent, with margins like this making it seem like the blue trend will continue, with Adam Schiff expected to be former LA Dodger Steve Garvey by a landslide. Unless Garvey is able to make a comeback, we can make California solid blue. Nevada's Senate election is just as heated as its presidential one, with one-term Democratic incumbent Jackie Rosen running for a second term. After beating the incumbent Republican Dean Heller by a margin of 5 points in 2018, polling seems to show that she'll probably win again. According to the most recent poll from Ruffo and Welton Strategies, in the head-to-head -head against military veteran Sam Brown, we can see Rosen wins by a slim margin of just 5 points, according to 435 likely voters. Looking at previous polls, Brown has been steadily catching up, but for now, Nevada becomes a lean Democrat state on our map today. Moving up north to one of the closest Senate races this cycle with Montana. Montana is usually a solid red state, at least on the presidential level, voting for Trump by a huge margin of plus 16.4 in 2020. Surprisingly though, the seat in play this election is three-term incumbent Democrat John Tester, who is looking to run for a fourth term. His main competitor is Tim Sheehy, a retired Navy SEAL turned businessman and politician. The most recent poll between these two shows Sheehy ahead plus 5, making Montana a lean Republican state. This is one of the closest races this election, and with it being an election year, it will be interesting to see how Montana actually ends up voting, just something to keep an eye on in the future. Unlike Montana, voters in Wyoming are much more certain about who they want to elect. There aren't any polls for Wyoming as of right now, but given how this is considered to be the most Republican state in the nation, it's safe to say it'll probably end up voting for incumbent John Barrasso. Because of this, Wyoming becomes our first solid red state. Next up is Utah. One-term senator and former presidential candidate Mitt Romney isn't going to run for re-election, leaving his spot up for grabs, but it probably won't go to the Democrats. Like many of these typical safe states, Utah has no polls released between the two major parties, but voters here haven't elected a Democrat in the Senate since 1977. The nominee, most likely John Curtis based on polling, will have no issue winning the election. Moving back further south to one of the few close battleground states, at least on the presidential level, with Arizona. Prior to the incumbent Kirsten Sinema announcing that she wasn't going to run for re-election, it seemed like this race would have been one of the most interesting in recent times. I only say that because she changed parties midterm from Democrat to Independent, which made this election look like it was going to be a three-way race. With her out of the race though, that leaves Democrat Ruben Gallego and Republican Kerry Lake in a head-to-head face-off. The most recent poll from Emerson College gives Gallego a slim four-point lead over Lake, according to 800 registered voters. 
I still think this will be an interesting and very close race, but with Gallego in the lead, we can lead Arizona to the Democrats. In our next state, New Mexico, Martin Herrick is looking for his third term after winning in 2018 in a three-way race with just 54%. The most recent poll between him and his Republican counterpart, Nella Dominici, gives Henrik a plus four margin. With a margin this close, Dominici could bring this back and win New Mexico. But for now, we can lean New Mexico in Henrik's favor. Moving into the south of the nation, we have two-term incumbent Ted Cruz, running for a third term in Texas. The Lone Star State is unlikely to see as big of a Democratic push as it has seen in his last few elections, mainly because of the trend to the right over the last four years, similar to what we are also seeing in Florida. We can see this in the most recent poll which shows Cruz leading by plus 8 over his Democratic competitor, Colin Allred. Comparing it to how Cruz won in 2018 by less than 3 percentage points, it really just puts into perspective how much better the GOP has been doing. Because of this, we can give Texas a likely Republican stance on the map. Next up are the states of Mississippi, with current Senator Roger Wicker looking for his third term in Tennessee with one-term incumbent Marsha Blackburn looking for her second. Both states are reliably Republican on the presidential level, voting for Trump by margins of plus 16.5 and plus 23.2 respectively in 2020. As of the making of this video, Mississippi doesn't have any polls for its Senate race, but Tennessee does. The most recent poll from Tennessee shows Blackburn winning by a plus 21 margin, making this state a solid Republican vote. And for Mississippi, given how reliably Republican it has been historically, we can also make it solid red. Moving on to Florida, which as I mentioned before with Texas, has seen a large shift to the right in the last four years, especially compared to 2018 where one-term Republican incumbent Rick Scott barely beat longtime Floridian Senator Bill Nelson by a margin of plus 1,200. The most recent poll from the University of North Florida shows Scott winning by a margin of plus 4. Looking at the previous polls from this cycle, however, this is among the lowest margins with the highest being plus 17. As of today, plus 4 is just enough to make Florida only lean in the Republicans' favor. Virginia is another state where a reasonably popular Democrat will be running for re-election, with the two-term incumbent Tim Kaine is looking for his third. In 2018, Kaine won with 57%, over 15 points higher than his Republican counterpart, Corey Stewart. On the presidential level, Virginia has been much closer, but it seems like Kaine has this race pretty much won, with the most recent poll showing him 10 percentage points ahead of Hong Kao, his main competitor this cycle. This is enough to make Virginia a likely Democrat vote. The last state in the South is usual Republican stronghold, West Virginia. The current Democratic Senator, Joe Manchin, isn't planning on running for re-election, giving Republicans a pretty easy shot at flipping it. The most recent poll shows what most expect with Republican nominee Jim Justice beating Democratic nominee Glenn Elliott by a margin of plus 33. With Justice ahead plus 33, West Virginia can be labeled as solid red state. Starting us off in the Midwest is North Dakota, with Kevin Kramer, a one-term incumbent, looking for a second. As most of you already know, North Dakota is usually solid red in most of its elections, and this is no exception. The most recent poll shows Kramer beating his Democrat counterpart, Katrina Christensen, by a margin of plus 37, making North Dakota another safe Republican state. In Nebraska, there are two elections this cycle, both with incumbent Republicans seeking re-election. Nebraska as a whole is very Republican, which should make both races easy victories. There is only polling for the main race in Nebraska, and the most recent one shows Republican incumbent Deb Fisher beating Democratic nominee Dan Osborne by a margin of plus 26, putting both of these safely in Republican hands. In Missouri, Josh Hawley is another Republican incumbent looking for a second term. Polling has been pretty consistent, with the most recent one showing a plus 9 in favor of Hawley. While Missouri would usually be considered a safe GOP state, based on this poll, it'll only be a likely one. Moving back up north, we have Minnesota, where three-term Democrat Amy Klobuchar is looking for a fourth, and it doesn't look close. There are two main Republican nominees, both of which have several polls for us to look at. The most recent ones shows Klobuchar winning by a margin of plus 21 against Joe Fraser and plus 22 against Royce White. Regardless of who Republicans nominate to officially run against her, it seems like it won't matter 
making this longtime Democrat state solid blue yet again. The first state in the highly contested Rust Belt region is Wisconsin, where two-term Democratic incumbent Tammy Baldwin is fighting for re-election. In her last election in 2018, she won by a margin of plus 10.8, but this cycle, repeating that margin might be a little harder given how much closer this election is looking, at least on the presidential level. The most recent poll between Baldwin and her Republican counterpart, Eric Hofty, shows the incumbent leading by plus 11. Unlike most states' polls being consistent, Wisconsin has been all over the place, but it definitely points to one person leading, and that's Baldwin, making this seat likely Democrat. Next up in the Rust Belt is Michigan. Current Senator Debbie Stabenow is retiring after holding the seat for over 20 years, and the favorite to replace her seems to be Congresswoman Elisa Slotkin, with the Republican opposition being Trump-endorsed politician Mike Rogers. The race seems to be close, but looking at the most recent poll from Glengariff Group, which polled 600 likely voters, Slotkin wins by a margin of plus 5, making Michigan a lean Democrat state. Next up is Indiana, where current one-term incumbent Mike Brown is planning to run for governor rather than another term as senator. To replace him is current United States Representative Jim Banks, who has already received endorsement from many notable names in the Republican Party. Indiana has proven to be a very popular Trump state, and since Banks has been directly endorsed by Trump, he is highly favored to win despite it being his first shot at the seat in the Senate. The most recent poll between Banks and the Democratic nominee Corey McRae shows Banks winning by a double-digit margin of plus 10. Because of this, we can make Indiana a likely red state. Neighboring Indiana is our next state, Ohio. Like John Tester in Montana, three-term incumbent Sherrod Brown is a Democratic senator in a very Republican state, especially now that J.D. Vance is Trump's VP pick. His biggest competitor this cycle is Bernie Moreno, a car dealership owner turned politician who gained a big chunk of support thanks to his Trump endorsement. And just like with Indiana, Ohio has been another popular Trump state, voting for him in almost the same margins as his neighbor in both of the last two elections. The most recent poll between Brown and Moreno shows the incumbent in the lead by a margin of plus four. Anything could happen in these last few months leading up to the election. But as of right now, we can make Ohio lean to the Democrats. Moving into the Northeast, even though Republicans have already secured the lead, This is where we still see the Democrats start to catch up. Finishing off the Rust Belt is Pennsylvania, where incumbent Democratic Senator Bob Casey Jr. is up against Republican nominee Dave McCormick, a businessman turned politician. The most recent poll shows Casey leading by just plus 5, much lower than the margin he's won in the past, but still a comfortable numbers for him. On the presidential level, polls are a lot more unclear, but given the consistent polling on the Senate level, we can make Pennsylvania another lean Democrat state. Next up are the reliably blue states of Maryland, Delaware, and New Jersey. In Maryland, unlike in past elections, this race has some unique circumstances since three-term Democratic Senator Ben Cardin is planning to retire and popular Republican Governor Larry Hogan is set to run as the Republican nominee. However, despite his popularity, the most recent head-to-head poll with him and Angela Alsobrooks, the Democratic nominee, shows him losing by a margin of 8 points. Because of this, we can make Maryland likely Democrat. In Delaware, the incumbent Democrat Tom Carper is planning to retire. While there aren't any polls, the Republicans don't have a notable enough candidate this cycle who can really challenge the Democratic nominee, most likely Lisa Blunt Rochester. Because of this, we can make Delaware solid blue. The current senator for New Jersey, Bob Menendez, was just convicted of 16 felony counts for, quote, bribery, extortion, and acting as a foreign agent, unquote, just a few weeks ago. Because of this, not only has he cleaned out his desk already, but, you guessed it, he won't be running for re-election. Current United States Representative Andy Kim is likely to take his place, and when pull up against Curtis Bashaw, the Republican nominee, Kim wins with a margin of plus 7 making New Jersey a likely Democrat Senate seat. Next up is the Empire State of New York, where Kirsten Gillibrand is looking for a third term. Surprisingly, there aren't any polls for the Senate race as of the making of this video, but given how New York hasn't put a Republican in the Senate since the 90s, we can make it solid blue. Moving further north to the New England states, 
The same solid blue trend we see at the presidential level is expected to continue to the Senate election. Neighboring New York is the smaller state of Vermont where Bernie Sanders, the longest running independent in congressional history, is planning on running again. Just like with New York, however, there aren't any polls yet, but with him caucusing with the Democratic Party and given his general popularity, we can make Vermont solid blue. Just south of Vermont is the second most democratic state in the nation, Massachusetts, where incumbent Senator Elizabeth Warren is looking for a third term, which she is likely to win. The most recent polls between her and the four potential Republican nominees shows her sweeping house, winning by margins greater than 20 points. Because of this, we can make Massachusetts another solid blue state. Moving on to Rhode Island and Connecticut, both states have three-term incumbent Democrats running for re-election. Sheldon Whitehouse in Rhode Island and Chris Murphy in Connecticut. Neither states have any polls as of the making of this video, but because these are historically blue, we can assume they will continue to be safe Democrat states. Our last state is Maine, with independent incumbent Angus King in a similar situation like Bernie Sanders in Vermont. Caucusing with the Democrats makes his only opponent Demi Kazunis, which as of right now, looks like it's going to be an easy win for King. The most recent poll shows King winning by a margin of plus 29, which makes this one of our easiest solid blues on the map today. With that, Republicans barely managed to win the majority in the Senate with 51 to 49. But what do you think will happen? Do you expect solid red states like Montana and Ohio to vote blue for the Senate? Or will one of the solid blue states like Maryland vote red? Let us know what you think in the comments.